Welcome back. The objectives of this video is to recognize five most common types of models involving exponential or logarithmic functions. And then we'll do some samples using exponential growth and exponential decay. Listed below are some of the exponential growth models that we will be looking at. Uh, the first one, the top of the page here, is the continuous, the compounding interest model. This one, I will expect you to memorize. In this model, A represents the amount of money that we will have at the end. So that's kind of our final amount. P is our principal amount, or the amount that we want to invest or save. And then uh, R is the interest rate, and that will set as a percent. So like 6%, the rate would be 0.06. And then T is time in years. So A equals P times E raised to the R T. The other models are listed below. We've got an exponential growth model, which is Y equals E to the X. And there are, you know, we've got Y equals A is the coefficient on E and B is the coefficient on X, and B's got to be greater than zero. Our exponential decay, so when something is regressing, that's why it's the same thing, but with negative BX. The Gaussian model, that's our bell curve. So there'll be different versions of this, but our basic bell curve model. A logistics growth model. I think we were hoping this is what COVID would look like, but it doesn't seem to be doing that at this point. A natural logarithmic model. So something, if we have a natural log, it's going to grow something like this. And then a common log model as well. So we've got these different models. You won't have to memorize those. We'll give you those. Here's a sample problem with population growth. The population of a city is given by P equals 95,300E to the 0.055T where t equal 0 represents 2,000. According to the model, when does the population reach 190,000? So this is our new p. So we put that into our model, 190,000 equals 95,300, all times e raised to the 0.055t. So we're going to solve for t. It's up in the exponent here. So we'll divide each side by 95,300 and simplify that. That simplifies just to 1,900 over 953 because we can just cancel a couple of places there equals e to the 0 0.055 t. In order to get our, x, our variable out of the Exponent will natural log both sides. So make sure you show that work. We want to see that. And we get the natural log of 1900 over 953. And I'll put that in parentheses for you. Equals. Now, you taking the natural log is going to bring that 0 0.055 T down in front of the natural log. So we'll do that right away in one step. It's natural log of E. So our exponent comes down in front of the natural log. That's the fun thing about natural logging both sides. The natural log of E is 1. So that's going to drop right out of our problem. And we want to solve for T. So we can solve for T by dividing both sides by 0 0.055. The left side here is calculator ready. We just put this all in our calculator we get 12.55 equals t. So that's 12.55 years after t equals 0. This would be approximately June of 2012. Next sample problem is a little bit more challenging. It is a modeling of population growth. And in this one, we are actually 
We're going to work with the growth models, but we have two different equations and two different variables. So this one's a little bit more complicated because we're really calculating our own growth model. We don't have the entire picture here, but they do tell us that after two days, there are 100 flies, and after four days, there are 300 flies. How many flies will there be after five days? Well, we have to do the work to figure out what this growth model looks like between two and four, and then continue that growth into the fifth day. So here, we're going to end up with two equations with two unknowns or two variables. So we'll, we're solving this essentially using a system of equations. So our two equations are written here. Uh, 100 equals AE and then raised to the 2B because that's our two days. And we'll, 300 because we have 300. Uh, what's our subject here? Flies, 300 flies after four days. So our two different equations are listed here. In order to solve for B, we're going to solve for A and then substitute that in. So let's take our first equation here and solve for A. And we do that by dividing both sides by E to the 2B. So A equals 100 divided by E to the 2B. So now we're going to take that value of A and we're going to substitute it into the other equation, into the equation with 300 equals A times E to the 4B. So they've done that. They've taken this A and they've substituted it into the other equation. And we'll simplify the other equation. We multiply, well, we simplify the equation, the e to the 4b over e to the 2b simplifies to e to the 2b. Then we divide both sides by 100 to get 3 equals e to the 2b. We need to get our variable out of the exponent here, so we'd natural log both sides. So we're natural logging both sides here. And that gives us natural log of 3 equals natural log of e to the 2b. So our 2b comes down in front here. They're not really showing that. So we get natural log of 3 equals 2b times the natural log of e. And of course, the natural log of e is 1. So that's how we get the natural log of 3 equals 2b. And then we multiply both sides by 1 half. So he gets 1 half natural log of 3 equals b. So now that we know what our b value is, we've got our entire model. Substituting back into the original 100, or a equals 100 divided by e to the 2b, we put b in there. And then we simplify, and we get 100 over 3 equals a. So now we've got a value for a. We can put that into our equation. And so now we have everything we need. Now we've got our new function. And we can figure out after five days, we've got a population growth of 3.25. So if you're having trouble following that, we can take a look at that in class. Uh, you might want to take a second look in your book and follow along with that as well and try and take a look at that. Our final sample. Sample problem three is a carbon dating problem where the standard, the typical carbon dating formula, R equals 1 over 10 to the 12th times E to the negative T divided by 8,223. We're taking a look at some carbon dating here this particular problem it says in living organic material the ratio of the content of radioactive carbon isotopes to the content of non-radioactive carbon isotopes is about 1 to 10 to the 12th when organic material dies its carbon 12 content remains fixed so scientists have come up with this formula to be able to figure out estimating the age 
of a fossil. We've got this R value of 1 over 10 to the 13th, and we want to estimate the age of this fossil. Using the carbon dating model, the one I wrote here in red, R is equal to 1 over 10 to the 12th times E to the negative T divided by 8.2225. But then we've got to take this value, R equals 1 over 10 to the 13th, and substitute it into the other side for R. So we set those two equal to each other. Then we multiply both sides by 10 to the 12th. So this 10 to the 12th, we want to get rid of that. We want to solve this left-hand side for t. We multiply both sides by 10 to the 12th. And then we do that. These cancel. And we get 10 to the 12th over the 10 to the 13th, which is simply 1 tenth. So we're working with e. We want to get that, or that variable out of the exponent. So we will natural log both sides. And that allows us to bring down our exponent in front. So we do our simplifying. They don't really show a lot of their work there. And we can calculate t to be 18,934. Rounding to the nearest 1,000 years, we get 19,000 years. So if you're doing web assign, make sure you read the directions. If it says answer to the nearest 1,000 years, please do that. And then on the other side, on the right-hand side, is a graphical solution, which is kind of handy to do this graphically. You simply put the two different functions in to your graphing calculator, the standard r and then your new r function, and see where those two meet and use the intersection there to answer your question. If you need to look at the ISECT feature in class, we can, we can take a look at that. Those are our sample problems and an introduction to exponential growth and decay models. And again, we can get more practice with this when I see you in class.